Hi, this is Dan. Thanks for listening to my podcast. I trust that it'll encourage you and build your faith. If you'd like to connect with me further, visit my website at revivalnow.com. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at RevivalNowDanSteep and Twitter at RevivalNowDan. You can also download the Revival Now app. Enjoy the podcast and share it with a friend. Welcome to this episode of the Dan Steep Podcast. We're talking about the origin and existence of angels. Angelology, believe it or not, that is a word. It comes from the Greek word angelos, which means messenger, and ology, which means the study of, or the study of angels. It's one of the ten major categories of systematic theology. I won't list all of those categories, but just know that angelology, or angelology, is one of the ten major categories of systematic theology and is worthy of our time and thought on this episode of the podcast. The, the definition of an angel is a supernatural messenger. They're supernatural messengers created by and deployed by God to serve and communicate His will. I'll say that one more time. Angels are supernatural messengers created by and deployed by God to serve and communicate His will. In every passage of Scripture where angels are present, they're never the main subject of the passage. They're simply messengers, one who executes the purpose and will of the one served, which is God. Now, it's really actually an important point that in every passage of Scripture where angels are present, they're not the main subject of the passage. The reason I'm pounding that point home is because you, you'll you find all kinds of weirdness uh, ar- around angels, e- even the worship of angels, which is strictly forbidden in Scripture. So I'm going to say it again. Every passage of Scripture where angels are present, they are not the main subject of the passage. Their presence is always in the context of revealing something more to us about God, what God does, how God is going to do it, but always in the context of of telling us more about God. Now, demonology, which is not the subject of this uh, episode, uh, demonology belongs within the study of angelology because demons, as we know from Scripture, are fallen angels. But the subject of demonology is for another time. That's for another episode. So, are angels real? And do they exist today? Does the Bible speak to the existence of angels? The answer is not only yes, the answer is extensively the Bible speaks to the existence of angels. Now the word angel is found 285 times in the 66 books of the King James Bible, 108 times in the Old Testament, and 177 times in the New Testament. 35 of the 66 books of the Bible refer to angels. Angels are found in the oldest book of the Bible, which is the book of Job. And it's also found in the first book of the Bible, which is the book of Genesis. For those who are not aware, the Bible is not arranged in pure chronological order. That's why we have the book of Genesis as the first book of the Bible, and the book of Job found much later in the Old Testament. Now, 17 of the 39 Old Testament books reference angels, while 18 of the 27 books in the New Testament reference angels. 
I have a, an unproven theory about why we see the Bible talking about listing and referring and referencing angels more in the New Testament than in the Old Testament, and that is because in the New Testament, that leads us closer and closer to the second coming of Christ. And I, I, I more than believe, I know, that as we come closer and closer to the rapture of the church, we're seeing a ramping up, not only of wickedness, but we're seeing a ramping up of the supernatural uh, realm in, in terms of light. We're seeing more, more experiences of God. In fact, uh, there are so many um, testimonies and stories about how God is revealing himself to people, sending messengers to them all over the Middle East, really strongly in Iran, uh, where, where God is coming to people in dreams and, and coming to them through angelic messengers and revealing himself to them. And we're going to see that increase all the more the closer we get to the second coming of Christ. Now, uh, of all these uh, sort of statistics that I've shared with you, uh, this does not account for the other names of angels in Scripture, such as sons of God and saints and holy ones and host, or Saboeth, which means hosts, or seraphim, cherubim, or ministering spirits. The, these references that I've given you about the, the commonality and the, the um, extensive use of the word angel and referencing to angels in Scripture doesn't even account for the, the accounts and the passages of Scripture that use these other names for angels. Now, angels are not all the same. They're not, you know, they're not the same in, like, rank. There's, you know, Michael, the archangel, Gabriel, those that have a, a higher rank. Um, they're not all the same in activity, in dimension, authority, power, and rank. And Jesus, he spoke extensively concerning the existence of angels. In Matthew chapter 24, we'll read verses 30, 30 and 31 of Matthew chapter 24. And it says, And then at, at last, the sign that the Son of Man is coming will, will appear in the heavens, and there will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send out his angels with the mighty blast of a trumpet, and they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. So there is Jesus speaking about angels and their um, sort of their role at his second coming. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 53, Jesus said, Don't you realize that I could ask my Father for thousands of angels to protect us, and he would send them instantly? Now, where do angels come from? What is their origin? We know this much. We know that angels are created beings. They are not pre-existent. There's only one, God, who is pre-existent. So where do angels come from? These created beings? Well, Psalm 148 gives us some insight. Psalm, the 148th Psalm, verses 1 through 6. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him from the skies. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all the armies of heaven. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you twinkling stars. Praise Him, skies above. Praise Him, vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord. For He issued His command and they came into being. He sent them in, he set them in place forever and ever. 
his decree will never be revoked. Angels are creative beings. Created to, to give praise to God, to be his messenger and carry out his will and his work in the earth. There's a lot of false teaching concerning angels, and that's why I was um, insistent as I was speaking earlier about the, the reality and the fact that the presence of angels is always in, in the Bible is always in the context of revealing something more about God. Angels are never the, the primary subject of the passage of Scripture that they appear in. Because there's a lot of, a lot of false teaching concerning angels. People that, that teach that they're spirits of glorified saints, that angels are departed human beings. Sometimes you hear people refer to their pets that have died, you know, as, as angels looking over them, um, that, that angels are recreated spirits of those that have passed away. Angels are not any of those things, and they are not ever to be worshipped. Colossians chapter 2, verse 18 says, Don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or the worship of angels. So there you have it. Expressly stated that we are not to worship angels. Expressly condemned in Scripture. Don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or the worship of angels, saying they have had visions about these things. Their sinful minds have made them proud. And that's one thing that you need to always keep in mind. Any vision or prophetic statement that anyone offers must always line up with the Word of God. What we do know is the angel, angels are commanded, and created by God. Now, there, there's several kingdoms in the Bible. The spirit kingdom, material kingdom, animal kingdom, human kingdom. And Jesus said in John 4, 24, God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Angels are a part of the spirit kingdom. So when were angels created? Well, the, there's nothing in Scripture that indicates the exact time of the creation of angels. And what I've learned along the way in my walk with the Lord and as a student of the Bible is that if the Bible doesn't say it, don't frustrate yourself and don't be prideful trying to nail something down that the Bible does not expressly state. I think that God purposefully kept angels somewhat hidden or in the background, knowing that people would naturally somehow try to worship them. In fact, the Apostle John did in Revelation ch chapter 22, and he was quickly corrected. Revelation chapter 22, verses 8 and 9 says, I, John, am the one who heard and saw all these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said, no, don't worship me. I am a servant of God, just like you and your brothers, the prophets, as well as all who obey what is written in this book. Worship only God. So there you have it. From Colossians 2.18 and from Revelation 22, verse 9, worship only God. Do not worship angels. But many people do worship angels today. You can find churches today that have massive statues and architecture and prayer stations where you bow to angels. We do know this. While we don't know the exact time of the creation of angels, we do know that they were created before the creation of the world. 
And we find that from the oldest book in the Bible, Job chapter 38. And I'll read verses 4 through 7. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? This is God rebuking Job, by the way. What supports its foundations? And who laid its cornerstone? As the morning stars sang together, and all the angels shouted for joy. So they were present before the creation of the world, and they were present at the creation of the world. So who created the angels? We don't know the exact time of their creation, but we do know that they uh, were present when the earth was created. Who created the angels? There's a clear biblical answer in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. Nothing was created except through the Word. And we know from from John chapter 1, verse 14, that the Word is Jesus. Verse 4 of John chapter 1 says, The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. Who created the angels? The pre-existent one, the one through which nothing, uh, through which everything was created. Let's hear from Colossians chapter one, verses fifteen through sixteen. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He's God, second member of the Trinity, second member of the Godhead, God. The Son. He existed before anything was created. I'm jumping back to Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 16. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on the earth. There you have it. Through Jesus, God created everything in the heavenly realms. And on earth. I continue in verse 16. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. May God bless the reading of the word. In the beginning was the Word. I'm going to continue reading that in the New Living Translation. John chapter 1. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Verse 9 of John chapter 1. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him 
and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory. The glory of the Father's one and only Son. His name is Jesus, the pre existent one. And the Word says that all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Reborn. Not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Hallelujah. The real question is not, do angels exist and when were they created and who created them? The real question is, are you ready to meet the creator of not only angels, but of heaven and earth? The Bible says that there is a song that will be sung by those who are born again when they enter into heaven. It's called the song of the redeemed. It's a song that angels can't sing because angels existed before the creation of the world, before the creation of humankind. And they therefore have never been redeemed. Only you and I can be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Again, John 1.12, But to all who believed Him and accepted Him, He gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Are you ready to meet the pre-existent one? The one through whom all things were created? The one whose light shines in the darkness and can never be extinguished? the one who will be worshipped without end through eternity. You see, the gospel message is very simple. God is holy, and we're sinful. God cannot change who He is. Holiness is His nature. And we can't change our sinful condition apart from the intervention of God. So God took the initiative to remedy our condition. By sending His only Son, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross to bridge the gap between the holiness of God and the unholiness of man. And all that we have to do in order to be reborn, as it says in verse 13 of John chapter 1, to be reborn, not with a physical birth, but a birth that comes from God, we must, I'm going to give you three words, recognize, repent, and receive. We must recognize our sinfulness. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I have to recognize that my sin is killing me, and it's not just killing me, it's killing those around me, and that the only way to peace is through faith in Jesus Christ. Once I'm willing to humble myself and acknowledge or recognize my sin, then I can repent. I can repent of my sin. Jesus said, and you will perish too unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. The word repent simply means to change. Change your mind, change your direction, change your lifestyle. It's to turn from a lifestyle of sin and turn to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin and the salvation of your soul. After we've recognized our sin and repented of our sin, the only thing left to do is simply receive or 
Commit your heart to him by faith. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I'd like to offer a simple prayer of salvation with you even now. And if you'll repeat this prayer after me from a place of sincerity in your heart, you can make that commitment to Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. You can be reborn, a birth that comes from God. Pray that prayer with me right now. Just say these words. Say, Heavenly Father, I admit that I've sinned. I believe Jesus died for my sins, and he rose from the grave to give me victory over sin and death. I confess my sinfulness. I repent and turn away from my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean by the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. And please come into my heart and make me a new person. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And that, my friends, is how you are reborn. Not a physical birth, but a birth that comes from God. And if you prayed that prayer together with me, welcome to the family of God. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And if you prayed that prayer together with me, you called upon the name of the Lord, so by the authority of God's holy word, I tell you today that you're saved. You're born again. Your sins are forgiven, and you're on your way to heaven because you have Jesus in your heart. And if you prayed that prayer with me, please go to our website at revivalnow.com. Revivalnow.com. You'll find a big red button on the front page of the website that says, I just got saved. I want you to click that button, and it is that button will give you the opportunity to view some video resources that I've prepared for you to help you get started in your Christian life. And if you fill out your contact information, we're going to send some resources to you to help you get started in your Christian life. So go to revivalnow.com, click I just got saved, and follow the prompts from there. I want to thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Dance Deep Podcast. Uh, if, if you've uh, enjoyed and appreciated this content, please share it with your friends. And if you'd like to find out more about uh, myself and the ministry of Revival Now, you can go to our website at revivalnow.com. You can see how God's using us to reach a million people with the gospel of Jesus Christ in a 10-year window of time. So thanks again for joining me on the episode. Make sure you tune back in. I know tune is kind of an outdated term, but uh, check back for more episodes as we're continuing to um, populate with more episodes all the time. Until next time, be blessed in Jesus' name.